Rochester Real Estate Show. Jason Mancuso here with the Anthony Butera team, joined by Derek Schluter again. Thanks for joining. Happy to be here. Yes, sir. Happy holidays, happy new year, all that jazz. Welcome to 2023. Goes by quick. It does. It does. It really does. <laughs> um, last episode, we did the 2022 year in review, and this episode is going to be 2023. Preview. Preview. Yeah. Um, I guess my thoughts to start off are, I don't know that there's a whole heck of a lot of change to talk about. No. I Honestly, this, this week in between Christmas and New Year's was probably the busiest I've had in my real estate career, um, which shocks For me. For the holidays or like period? Period. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. No, I mean, typically, like, seasonality plays out to where, you know, we see, um, you know, a good uptick after the holidays. And, you know, we've talked about it before, but, like, you know, spring market really does start in January. And that just heightens as, as the, you know, spring actually hits. And then spring is the busiest time of year for real estate. Summer would be the second season. Winter is really the third, and and fall, you know that you know fall after kids go back to school and going through the holidays is would be in fourth place yeah. out of the four. So yeah, I mean we're the conversations that have been having this week to start the new year, um, you know as you just alluded to, seems to be playing out to where you know a lot of the same seasonal effects are, are taking place. Which is good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you I'll know, be honest to say, like, it's it's been relatively easy, not easy, but the, the predictions, you know, hold true year in and year out for how things play out up until last year, which just, you know, all bets are off in terms of, you know, the, the interest rates rose and buyers just said, hey, pump the brakes. Yeah. Um, so this year, going into this year, it's kind of like, all right, you know, hopefully this all plays out the, the way that it, it typically does, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the interest rates at 6%, I mean, if you look over the years, uh, what was one of the average was like 10% or something like that? Or it... Well, you're, you were right around, I mean, depending on the time period, right? Yeah. Like if you go way back, then, then yeah, it, get, it gets to be not quite 10, but like you could be in the overall average of like 8%, high sevens, 8%. And then, yeah, typically like 6% is a good average rate. Yeah. I guess is the way yeah. to put it, right? Yeah. So I think the first topic to dive into is interest rates. And I think it's it's more of like a review of what happened in 2022 in terms of the rates jumped from three, four-ish at the start of the year to where we are now, but had a period where seven and a half was in play. Yeah, And that really just kind of paused the market, for lack of a better word. I mean, then like full stop, but like the buying frenzy that was of 2020, 2021, that stopped. Yeah. The frenzy type aspect, the extreme nature of that. And also like to comment like seller's market, you know, buying frenzy was, was happening a couple of years prior to 2022 or 2020. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that run of just like, Buyers didn't care about anything because the rates were so low. Sellers were super happy with their home selling, you know, hundred thousand dollars or whatever, yeah, you know, whatever the example is over asking price in, in a matter of a week. Um, that type of element came to an end last year, and you know, this year, I guess my prediction would be. I don't necessarily see the same type of extreme craziness of, you know, $100,000 increments flying around. But, I mean, we're seeing, and talk to me, you know, without, without getting into too many details, we're talking, we're, we're seeing listings with 50, 60, 80 showings, you know, dozen offers. Yeah. 
well over asking price still, and I'm the week between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, so there's a property that was listed last week that I showed one of my clients, and I reached out to the agent to kind of get a feel of you know what the activity was like, and you know, 89 plus showings, 12 offers in hand, and I'm like, are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> you know, right. and then I look at this other, you know, I was looking at another property. Uh, north side of Greece and uh, it's been on the market for three weeks and I'm like why it's in a great neighborhood and it's just yeah you know it's uh, close to the lake and uh, it's still available so. well I think I think ultimately you know it's really gonna be case by case more than ever you, you just gave two stories of that yeah right where you have one where I'm assuming this property that went crazy was a 10? Yeah, to it. yeah, it was probably 9 out of 10. Yeah. yeah, so like really nice property, priced accordingly, in a good location. We're, we're still seeing that type of, of activity. Now, I think, I'm not necessarily just going to say what I'm going to say to not scare people off, but I, I think that people should not be scared off because the, you know, just the, 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 the it's almost like the emotions that were involved with wanting to buy a home that you're going to live in at a super low interest rate and then having that catapult the pricing as a result. I think, you know, that played out up until last year. So I do think there's going to, I just don't think it's going to be as crazy as it's been. No, I, I, I agree. Agree. What I'm rumbling around yeah, with here, yeah. right? Um, but don't get me wrong. So that the, that comment is also hedged with like, but you're not gonna just go in thirty grand under asking price and no. you know expect to uh, be looked at. You know, assuming you know with a situation like that. Yeah, probably. yeah. The other example is like that that the you know the one that you mentioned that's been sitting for three weeks. Yeah. As a buyer looking for quote unquote a deal, like okay, that, that could be it. You know, there's no reason for a seller to have to, you know, drop their pants so to speak and give a property away at this point. I mean, we're still in a seller's market, right? Yeah. All right. What is, like what? How's this conversation go with new buyers that you're you're working with that are just getting into the market? Like what? I, you know, I explained how the market was in the past, um, and basically we have the conversation that they, they might actually find a decent deal out there right. um, because of the interest rates being higher and there's not as many buyers out there. Uh, granted, inventory is still a little low, but it's the seasonality of it too. Yeah. Um, but I think there's opportunities out there, and having that opportunity conversation is, is key with buyers. I mean, last year you're like, I, I want another buyer, like I want a hole in the head, or even two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. And, you know, writing offers 126000 over asking and not getting it, and just, you know, I, that's, it's, it's going to be easier to work with buyers. It's going to be harder to work with sellers. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, up until 2021, it was just tough for everybody on the buying front because on our end, it's like, hey, look, like, I'm sorry. There's, it's not that there's nothing that I can do, but at the end of the day, you got to max it out and you got to be as contingent free as possible. And beyond that. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, whatever that looks like for you that you're comfortable with, let's see if we can get into running with that. That was how the conversation was. Now, it's more of like we can, you know, not that we weren't doing our jobs, right? But like we can get more tactful and, and negotiate more in certain spots and, and be more, you know, calculated and not just have to take the approach of like, it is what it is. If yeah. you want to be in the market, I mean, it's not my rules, but here's, you know, here's how things are playing out. You tell me if you're comfortable with that, right? Yeah. Now it's like actual... It's more of a skill set to it on our end, yeah. which is good, which is great, right? Um, and then, yeah, as you, as you mentioned, like sellers, to avoid being that house that didn't catch any sort of a frenzy, didn't sell right away, 
you know, don't get me wrong, only three month, three weeks on the market with perspective isn't the end of the world, yeah. but the market's still strong enough for sellers to where, like, that seller has a problem right now. Like, there's either something going on with the house. Maybe the agent's not doing something they should be doing. Yeah. Chances are it's overpriced. Because the market is now in a position to react to price more so than they have been up until last year. So really, this year is kind of almost a continuation of last year. Yeah. <laughs> Would be, I hate to say safe bet, because who the hell knows, right? But that would be my bet. I think, I think regarding interest rates, I think what happened last year makes perfect sense, you know, from a lot of different angles in terms of like the rates had to go up. I mean, we, you know, it was just unsustainable to keep them that low considering, you know, how the economy's been moving and performing, so to speak. It makes perfect sense that buyers, once the rates went up, said, thanks but no thanks. Yeah. I'm gonna take a pause here and see how this plays out. Add inflation to the mix with everything costing more, gas, groceries, etc. you know. Some, you know, financial pain out there that, that wouldn't make people jump to a big, you know, massive purchase like buying a home. To me, I think, you know, it seems as though the rates have settled. And this is where this could be a dangerous conversation. I'm yeah. right now because, you know, there could be something that hits the news on my phone right now and... You know, rates start skyrocketing yep. again over the course of the next couple of weeks, whatever it is, right? So at any, at any given point, turmoil can happen that, that put, you know, debunk <laughs> this whole episode, right? <laughs> but I think, I think what's going to happen this year, if I were to offer a prediction, would be that buyers start to realize the days of 3% interest on a mortgage are long gone, maybe forever, and that the rates aren't going to drop. And that this is just what is the new norm. It's the new norm, yep. I mean, the, the overall predictions are that, you know, depending on what you look at, like Fannie Mae offers predictions of where the rates will be, and they're higher than the Mortgage Bankers Association. But overall, by the end of this year, heading into 2024, I, don't quote me on this, but I think Fannie Mae is like, you know, a 5.5% range. So, you know, we're, we're at between six, six and a half right now, um, depending, you know, so, so that coming down a point, half a point, and the mortgage bankers' predictions are lower than that, optimistically. But nobody's expecting rates to go down to three or four percent at any given time in the anywhere near future. Yeah. I mean, maybe you hit high fours at some point in the next few years. Yeah. I mean, I had a client that's two years ago that got locked in at like 2.78 or insane. something ridiculous like that. It's I was insane. just like, oh my gosh. It's really insane. It was really just a, a crazy opportune time period that we lived in <laughs> the last few years yeah. leading up to 2022. Um, that's a great segue into what is the inventory conversation, <laughs> right? In, in that, like, you know, we've been in this seller's market, which, you know, to just simply define as there's not enough supply to meet the demand, so things favor the seller, for much longer than 2020, you know, 2016-ish, 2017 it really started. Or is it just enough buyers? And, and for a number of different factors, rents are high, you know, um, the rates started to, to get, to, you know, low back then too, where it just made sense to buy. More buyers than there are sellers out there. And right now, there's, there's no, like, cure to the inventory problem that we have on the horizon. And just everybody that bought with a low rate only adds to that problem because they're looking and saying, where am I going to move and get the same monthly payment or the same interest rate at least for a more expensive home? And is that a prudent financial decision, I guess? 
Yeah, and I mean, it's it's like I said, the few people that I'm working with right now are moving from other areas to here, and um, different market from where they're moving from, in Florida and, and North Carolina, you know, just a completely different market. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, even some of the comments that I've heard is like, this is it. <laughs> you know, this price is price wise. Yeah, this is this is what we're looking at. There's only you know 14 houses. Oh, but, like from yeah, an inventory standpoint. Yeah, from yeah. an inventory yeah, standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I had ex you know I explained them too that it's this it's not just the inventory is a little low. It's the seasonality too of it. Sure. And, and you know, in, in, granted, in the next few weeks you will see more come on the market. It'll pick up, but I mean, it's not gonna. There's. <laughs> It's really tough to have this discussion here today, January 4th, and, and predict that 2023 is going to be a year where we're a fully balanced market. And if you just define that as like, there's one home for sale for every one buyer, or we much less head to a buyer's market where, okay, now prices may drop, buyers you know, can negotiate a lot more homes sit on the market much longer because there's two homes for every one buyer in that case. And now buyers get to choose. There's nothing out there that says we're going to have this influx of inventory that causes a major shift. No, no. I, I, I agree with what you were first talking about that I see 2023 kind of being like the end of 2022 where those 10 out of 10s and the, right. the places to be are going to go, yeah. you know, we'll have multiple offers, but it's going to go 30, 40, maybe that over. And then, you know, the which average, compared to would have been a hundred and right. 140 right. two years ago. Right. Right. And the average listing, you know, so, so home. Yeah. It's probably going to sit on the market for a few weeks before it goes, but yeah, um, it'll still go. It'll still go. Yeah. So pricing wise, I think that's that's the biggest, you know, one of the bigger things for people is like, okay, well, with all this said and everything going on in the economy and the rates, why wouldn't pricing just drop off a cliff? Why wouldn't home values drop off a cliff? And I think, to me, the answer really stems from this inventory problem. Yeah. It's just, until there's less buyers and there are homes for sale. It's just simple supply yeah, and demand yeah. economics, right? Like if you have, you know, limited to supply of a good or product and more demand than what is being supplied, there's no reason for the supplier to drop the price, right? right? I don't know what cures the inventory dilemma other than continued reduced demand. And I don't know that that's going to be the case for our market anyway, because we have still affordable price points at average around somewhere in the 200s to 30, 240, whatever. And high rent prices, if you're renting and don't own a home, there's just always the reasons that people need to move. You know, yeah. Death, divorce, jobs, relocation, moving here, babies, needing a bigger house. There's, don't get me wrong, like the rates last year and the economy overall like significantly reduced the demand. We're still in this position where it still outpaces the supply. Yeah. It seems, I don't know, it doesn't, <clears throat> I guess not to say that it doesn't add up because it kind of does when you really get into the details, but. I think it's, it makes sense as to why there's so many people out there like, we're in a bubble, or prices are going to drop, I'm going to wait to buy until prices drop. I don't know if that's the case. I think Rochester's a stable market, too, a lot more stable than some of the bigger sure. cities. So, you know, you see the headlines where prices fall in Los Angeles 20% and this yeah. and that. And because we've been so undervalued for so long, yep. um, you know, just be a little blip here. I don't really... Well, in... I guess I, I read this this morning, actually. <clears throat> so this is a national article, so not local to Rochester. But the snippet of it was that home prices grew 8.6% nationwide in November compared with a year before. Meaning last year in 2022, with all the stuff that we just covered, 
as to why it was a different market than 2021 and years prior, home prices still grew 8.6% year over year in November. So from November to 2021 to November two months ago, in that year period, home prices grew almost 10%. The news will say there was a reduction in growth, you yeah. know, because it wasn't double digits. It was the first time, and I forget how long it said, that it wasn't double digit growth. Still growing. Growth. Yeah. Still growing. Still appreciating. Yeah. Now, you'll see news stories of prices declining, and, it, and it's already started, like from a month over month trend. That you know, goes on to say, uh, despite falling 0.2% month over month, meaning home prices fell 0.2%, big deal, from October to November, okay? That annual increase is the lowest in the past two years, and it ends a 21-month streak of double-digit gains, so they, they do have that data. Yeah. The monthly decline is expected to continue in December when prices are expected to dip 0.1%. CoreLogic reports. The firm expects prices will rebound toward the end of the year and increase 2.8% compared to where they were in November of 2022. So all that said, there's going to be like a little bit of a dip. A little bit. I mean, so far we're talking not even 1%. We're talking fractions of a point. And then they're saying by the end, the predictions are that the data next year will just show a 2.8% growth in pricing. Growth, not drops, for 2023. And that, that plays in with the interest rate talk that you first talked about, where people are still kind of like 6%. And right. then, you know, five months, four months down the line, they're going to be like, I don't think it's going to change, so it's going to be the i got to make a move, yeah. and I don't really have a choice, yeah. right? All of that, like, so why home prices aren't falling? It's supply. Yeah. It's not enough supply to, to allow them to fall. Bigger markets, you know, we'll see. I mean, I think, I think where the news will point out problems are going to be people that made bad decisions in the last few years and now have to sell in this corrective type period. And they got into that bidding war and that, you know, hundred thousand dollar over asking price example and now they can only sell it for thirty thousand dollars less than what they paid for. It. Yeah. And that sure, that's gonna sting because, you know, unless you paid cash, you have a loan balance. Yeah. And you have expenses with selling. You may be underwater in that example. I think these predictions show, these stats show that if you don't need to sell, I always I always look at it as like just just think of it as your 401k or your IRA, like you're not gonna touch it till you retire. Don't even look at the value of your home unless you need to sell or unless you need to do something with it. During these times anyway. Yeah. Really anytime, I guess on the upswing too, if you're not selling, like you just you know, could drive yourself nuts if you look and say, Oh my house is worth uh, you know, <clears throat> Five hundred thousand today, and when I, you know, I paid three hundred thousand fifteen years ago, and it's really only relevant when you're looking to sell or looking to refinance or yeah. pull equity out, right? Um, I don't know anything else on the horizon. Twenty twenty three. I think we, I think we summed it up decent here. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's kind of like you know more of the same, just hopefully less extreme in spots. I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be overall be a good year. Uh, just you know, the uh, like I said, the the interest rates. You'll see that little lull, and then I think you'll see it kind of be the norm, and you'll see things pick up. Yeah, uh, that's what I see out there. Yeah, and I mean the the one thing we haven't addressed is just sheer number of sales dropped dramatically last year, and it's expected to drop again, but in line with the overall results of last year. Again, we got to look at history's sake and just know that, you know, 2021, 2020, those were historical years for the number of homes that sold nationwide. And now we're kind of like back into 
normal territory. <laughs> normal market. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's. Just, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what this. Uh, we'll see what the year in review looks like a year from now. But I think I think these are all, you know, we get, we're bringing some logic to these these thoughts. And it's dangerous for us to make predictions. Somebody could listen to this episode six months from now, and it's just the complete opposite um, in either direction, good or bad. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But at the end of the day, what I love about helping people in this business, at the end of the day, it's just. What are you comfortable with? What do you need to do? What do you want to do? Let's unpack that and figure out a game plan. And educate them. Yeah. You know, like if the rate's 10% or 3%, it's still the same type of questions that we're asking. So from there, we'll just, you know, at the end of the day, make sure they're comfortable with what the market is and then get into it if it makes sense. Absolutely. So, cool. Happy New Year. Derek Schluter here with uh, the Anthony Butera team. Casey Mancuso as always, and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you.